Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom TV edition for the week of May 14th, 2018. This week in TV, we're talking about Lord of the Rings. We're talking about Stranger Things. We're talking about Supernatural. A bunch of stuff is going on. Let's hit the intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Yeah, generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we can jump into the news, guys, we have to jump into the sponsors. I skipped it last week and the week before because getting back into the swing of things, but now we're being sponsored again, kind of. Uh, all week, every one of these episodes is sponsored by two things. First of all, Punishshirt.com, the wonderful guys that gave me these shirts. Uh, for those of you that were took part in that contest, thank you very much for being a part of the contest. For the rest of you, though, there is this shirt over on PunishShirt.com. You can go get one for yourself. They're about 20 bucks. They're actually super high quality. Go support some small business over at PunishShirt.com. The other shirt is the new shirt up on the Teespring store. Teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. It's the photographer shirt. Uh, I'm, do I'm doing a series of shirts that look something like this. It's a play on an obvious, uh, already established brand that I just think is a little ridiculous. So this is the first of the series. I told you guys I was going to be adding some shirts. I actually have other uh, designs done. They just haven't made it up onto the, onto the store yet. They probably won't make it onto the store until next week. So this will be our first one in this vein. You can get your photographer shirt over at teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. Now let's jump into the news, shall we? First on our list, we're talking about Peter Jackson maybe going to produce The Lord of the Rings on Amazon or might be doing a DC Extended Universe movie. Which one should he do? I just, uh, this is according to the One Ring pod or, uh, news site, it's a Lord of the Rings news site, that he's debating, and that is, that is an epic choice to, to be making, right? Is do I, do I revisit this, this land that I've spent so much time that has already made me so much money? Do I go back there and be a producer? Or do I go here to this new fertile land that really I can do whatever I want because they need something that's going to be a flagship title because they've tried their hand at it a few times and and of those few times, you know, a small handful, only one of them has stuck. So, I feel like the choice should be obvious for young Mr. Jackson, but there is something to be said about job security and making, you know, the same stuff. I, I, I honestly, as a creative person, I feel like the obvious choice is make the DC movie. Again, you're Peter freaking Jackson you can probably just tell them this is the movie I'm making and this is how I'm making it and they'll be like, yes, please, let's give him all the money and the checks and the things. So what do you guys think? Which is the better choice for Peter Jackson? Should he go to DC, go to Warner Brothers and make a DC movie or should he just stick around in uh, Middle Earth for a while longer and, and be a producer on the Amazon TV show? Let's talk about that in the comments. Next on our list, we're talking about new casting over on Stranger Things. Season three, as we well know, is well underway in pre-production, uh, almost into post-production, or rather into primary production. Uh, this week, we got a new casting announcement for a character named Heather. Uh, this character is going to be a popular lifeguard at the Hawkins Community Pool who becomes a centerpiece for a dark mystery that is taken directly from the uh, 
the press release. Uh, she's going to be played by Francesca Real. I've never heard that name before. I'm sure I've seen her in something. I just don't know the name. Uh, but this is this is the cool thing. So, Stranger Things, one of the main reasons why it works so well, aside from the stellar acting, because those kids are great, uh, all of the adult actors are great in that show too. So I'm not just singling out the kids, but uh, one of the other primary reasons why it works so well is because of the nostalgia factor, because it's got that 80s thing going. Um, one show that kind of... I mean, I feel like it was the 90s, but still it was early 90s that came out in that with that same kind of feel, that nostalgia feel, was The Sandlot. And one of the undercurrents of The Sandlot, there was a subplot that included a lifeguard. So I feel like that's this is going to make this subplot, whatever, I, I it... It doesn't say specifically that this is going to be a subplot, but it also doesn't say specifically that this is going to have anything to do with the main plot for season three. So who knows? Uh, we won't know until next year because that's when it's coming out. So I just feel like that's really an interesting, they're tying it into their overall theme as well as tying it into their theme of nostalgia. So good on you guys. Netflix, you're doing good things in spite of some of your political views. Next on the list, we're talking about Wayward Sisters and all of the other shows that didn't get picked up. Uh, I honestly thought Wayward Sisters was the absolute most sure thing that the CW was trying to get up off the ground this season and uh, nothing. And on top of that, uh, a bunch of other shows, it's not the same network exactly, but they're owned, but CW is owned by Fox. Fox just announced a whole bunch of cancellations that have a lot of fans up in arms. Uh, I just, your target demographic is basically, and, and I know, I know I watch the show, we talk about the show on here pretty frequently, but target demographic is basically... Uh, teenage girls to young adult women and you have a way to spin off a show from this very popular very money-making show you have a way to spin off another show that stars teenage girls and young adult women and you don't pick it up that doesn't make any sense like this even felt better than their their previous attempt at a spinoff in season six the bloodlines spinoff which was very bad <laughs> uh this this felt like a another version again i don't necessarily think it's needed but it doesn't make sense if you're following this this media narrative and and diversity and female empowerment and stuff is what needs to be pushed then you don't push it just doesn't make sense to me <laughs> But that's all we're doing on uh, Wayward Sisters. Then we have an update on Jon Favreau's live action Star Wars show. Uh, he came out and was talking with Nerdist and said that his series, uh, whatever he, he's producing, he's the showrunner for it. This series is going to take place seven years after Return of the Jedi. So this series is going to be what fills the gap between Return of the Jedi and uh, The Force Awakens. So this could be very pivotal in the overall universe of Star Wars. So <clears throat> just it looks like Favreau is going to be their guy and then everyone else is going to be kind of playing off of what he does except for in the animated realm we still are unsure about that so again time's going to show us all of these things but my projection is favreau is going to be the focus as far as tv stuff goes and everything else tv wise is going to play into or play off of favreau and then our last bit of news this week is rick and morty are back for seven seven seasons seven seasons of rick and morty they just signed it was announced 70 episode deal with Cartoon Network. 70. 7 0. That means if because their seasons have been 10 episodes each, that's seven seasons of Rick and Morty that we're almost guaranteed. Nothing is ever absolute, but uh, that means I have to catch up before season four starts. But 
because they haven't actually started work on season four, I've got time because it takes them a long time to do episodes. Though, because they know they're coming back for seven seasons, I would imagine between between season four and five, and then five and six, and then six and seven, uh, all of those gaps are going to be significantly smaller because they're going to take less time off between seasons because they know they have to get right back to it and making those 10 more episodes. So yeah, very interesting. I'm super excited for it. The, the, I've only seen the first season of Rick and Morty. I know I'm way far behind, but you know, that's the way it goes. And that guys is the last bit of news this week for TV news. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If though you wanna go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can do that. You can find links to the store so you can get your nerd swag. You can find links to the social media. Uh, there's, I do uh, articles up on the website, all kinds of free stuff up there. Or if you want to contribute a little more directly, there's a Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. There's four tiers. All of that's broken down over on the site, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you are new to the channel, click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, before we do boxes and stores and things, always, always remember, guys, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>